With this Brown Eye Girl guitar lesson, we'll show you how to play a strum along arrangement that works well for a one person performance. We'll also show you how to play the classic opening riff to Brown Eye Girl on acoustic guitar. With guitar tabs, chord diagrams, and an accompanying karaoke practice video, we'll cover it all with the step by step approach. Now for the strum along lesson, we're going to start by focusing on the main rhythm guitar parts, which are the verse and chorus sections. And then we'll follow that by covering the intro, the middle break, and we'll also show you a way to play the famous intro electric guitar riff on an acoustic guitar. But starting with the verse section, it's going to be a four chord sequence. So we'll go through the uh, chord transitions here with the one strum approach. And the initial four chord sequence will be G, C, back to G, and then D. And this four chord sequence will be played three consecutive times. And then the final four chord sequence for the verse section, uh, we're going to substitute a D7 for that last D chord. So that final four chord sequence is G, C, G, D7. For this basic strum along version, we're going to use one strum pattern that remains consistent throughout the entire song. And it's a basic strum pattern. We can apply some variations, but to start, it's going to be down, down, up, up, down. And if you notice, I'm using my fretting hand to mute the strings uh, because we really want to focus more on the right hand. For most of you, the right hand, the strumming hand, uh, to get that rhythm down. So down, down, up, up, down. You could also apply a count. Some of you might prefer that. One, one, two, three, four. But the key is uh, to repeat that and to get a steady rhythm going before we work on the progression. So let's try this strum pattern four times in a row with the muted strings. One, two, ready, go. Down, down, up. And then once you can do that, let's apply that to the uh, initial four chord progression, G, C, G, D. One, two, ready, go. Once you have the strum pattern down, the next step is to focus on timing or syncing the lyrics with the chord changes. Uh, that's for those of you who are going to sing along and play. And if you haven't done a lot of that, uh, I have a couple pointers for you regarding how to time uh, those lyrics with the chords. And uh, starting with the opening line, uh, Hey, Where Did We Go? Uh, with that opening G chord, uh, you don't start singing on that first down strum. In fact, the vocals are a little bit delayed after that down strum. Uh, it sort of goes like this. Hey, where did we go? Go will land right on the C. So a little bit of delay on the G, but landing right on the C. Same thing for the next phrase, days when the rains came. Again, days will be delayed after that first down strum. Days when the rains came. Rains will land right on D. We sort of apply that approach throughout the complete verse section. So what we'll do with the next clip, uh, you can work on uh, this initial way to focus on timing the lyrics. We'll do a slow approach again with the complete verse uh, in the next clip. After the first verse, we go right into the first chorus section, which will be an A chord progression. So we'll start by working on the chord changes with the one strum approach. Uh, the progression will be C, D, G, E 
minor, C, D, G, and then D7. So you may note the first three chords are always the same, C, D, G, E minor, C, D, G, D7. And with that, let's apply the strum pattern now to the chorus. We'll review that. Slow walk through. One, two, ready, go. Once you have the verse and chorus sections down, it's a good idea to work on putting things together and working on a basic arrangement. And what I mean by that is uh, by combining verse 1 with the first chorus, and then following that with another verse and another chorus progression, because that's uh, the running order of the song. Uh, Guitar-wise, well, song-wise, it's verse 1, first chorus, verse 2, second chorus. Verse 2, you have different lyrics, but... Guitar-wise, regarding the progression, just think verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And if you can put all those together, you're just about halfway through the song, and it simply makes learning the rest of the song a lot less challenging. After the second chorus, we have our first bridge section. And the bridge section, a good way to memorize it is it starts with a three consecutive D7 chords played. Now, technically, the first D7 is the last measure of the chorus, but... Uh, let's look at the bridge as an individual section right now uh, before we put it all together. And that would be with three consecutive D7 strums. Sort of revving up into the, uh, the actual lyrics, the sha-la-la part. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, the lyrics that sync up. This is with the Do You Remember When. So it's... That's going to lead into uh, the shalala part, and for that part of the bridge, uh, you're just going to be repeating a four chord sequence G C G D seventh. And so, what we'll do uh, right now is we'll put together this whole section three D sevenths, then G C G D seven two times, and uh, that'll take care of the bridge section. So here we go, slow walk through from the top. One, two, ready, go. After the bridge section, there's an eight chord sequence. I call it the middle break of the song. Uh, that's where the rhythm guitar goes in the background and uh, the bass and drums come in the forefront. There's a little bass riff. Now, if you're not playing along with other musicians, if we're just doing a strum along performance, uh, we need to make adjustments for this section. And I'll give you two options. Uh, the first is a real basic one. Simply delete six measures and just play two measures of G, maintaining that strum on a G chord to lead into verse three. Uh, so I'll show you how that sounds. I'm gonna back it up to the uh, last four measures of the bridge, the shalala part, and show you how it sounds uh, with just two ad added G chords. So. Here's the two Gs, la ti da, one, two, into verse 3. That's option 1. Option 2 would be to play through all eight measures uh, but changing up the rhythm strum uh, of the progression. Uh, the progression, uh, the first two chords would be the first two G's, then two more G's. So the A chord progression is actually four G's and then G, C, G, D. So um, the strum we're going to apply before we put it all together, down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, up, up. And here's 
here's how it's going to sound. I'll play just the middle section, the A chord sequence, starting with two regular G strums. And then the next two, down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 and then the C. That would lead into verse 3. So those are two options you could do for the middle section. On the original recording, uh, the song fades out with the bridge repeating. Uh, for an unaccompanied performance, a live one, uh, we have to uh, change it up and add uh, an ending. And a suggested ending uh, for this, uh, we are going to extend the bridge. They do it on the original recording. So instead of uh, an eight chord progression for the bridge, it'll actually be 12. You'll just play an extra four measures. Uh, and then we'll add a G uh, just for a final strum, uh, ending on la ti da on a G chord. So backing up a little bit, here's how it'll sound the ending. In the original recording, there is an intro. It's an A chord sequence, uh, but the rhythm guitar, you really don't hear. It's sort of an implied uh, progression where you have uh, the bass and the electric guitars in the forefront. Uh, but if you're playing unaccompanied, uh, one option if you want to follow the original recording is to simply strum the progression. It's the same G, C, G, D progression uh, that we did to start the verse, and you'll play it two times. So it'll sound like this. We've gone over this, but I want to play it to have you hear how it sounds. It might be a little bit long of an intro, but if you do this, you'll match up with the original recording. Now that'll work fine. Uh, if it's too long, simply cut it in half. Just do uh, four measures and then kick into verse one. Or for a real basic version, you can simply delete the intro and uh, like I said, just jump right into verse one uh, with the vocals without any intro. Now even though this is a basic strum along version for Brown Eyed Girl, a lot of you are probably interested in learning that classic opening riff uh, that you hear on the original recording. Uh, and I believe that riff uh, features two electric guitars played together. There's definitely some uh, doubling of notes going on. And so what we're going to do here is show you a way to sort of emulate that uh, for one person on an acoustic guitar. And uh, so what we're going to do, since we're going to be using a pick to strum, uh, we're going to use a pick here. You could do basic finger style using your thumb in your, in your middle or third finger, but I'm going to show you how to do it with something called hybrid picking. And what that is, is you hold the pick like normal, like you're going to strum it with your first finger and your thumb. And you're going to, that's going to be plucking the third string. But meanwhile, you're simultaneously going to be pinching the top string and in this case I'm going to be using my two finger, my middle finger, to do that. And if you note here the one finger is on the top string third fret, we skip over the two and put our middle finger on the third string fourth fret. And we get that sort of bell-like chime going on here uh, with the pick on that third string and then we got the softer sort of warmer tone with the fingers on the top string. And here's how it's going to sound. So from that first pairing of notes, we go up one fret. Uh, the middle finger is anchored, slides up one fret. Third finger uh, is now on the top string fifth fret. Both fingers fretting the fifth fret. Then we take that same shape and move up two frets. And then go back down with the same pattern we use going up. Same interval pattern. That's going to sync up with the G chord. Uh, and so, I would call that the G riff. And then the riffs follow the progression. The progression will go from G to C. And in this case, we go up now to the 8th fret position. Frets are a little bit closer together, but it's the same riff. That'll lock into the C, and then the, when the progression goes back to G, we, re, we repeat the G riff, and then on D, 
least this is what I do. Uh, we play a double stop, one finger, second string, third fret. Uh, I'd use the pinky on the top string, fifth fret. You just sort of brush those strings. You can even use the pick. And then a three note riff, two, three, five. So backing it up a little bit. And finally, we'll put the whole thing together, slow walk through. ending if you want. You could go back to that initial note and let it sustain. So that could work if you're playing this along with a couple of guitarists, but it's fun just to play the riff on your own as well. Once you have each section down, the final step is to put together a complete arrangement or performance of the song. And you can do that along with my Brown Eyed Girl karaoke video. And with that karaoke video, you can practice singing with Brown Eyed Girl karaoke, playing guitar with Brown Eyed Girl karaoke, we're doing both.